Welcome Protégé. In the last tutorial we showed you how to do offset entities in your sketch. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create an aluminum breadboard. Now I already created the aluminum breadboard so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see it consists of a matrix of the same diameter holes. So I'll go ahead and create a new design and show you how we created this. Now before you start dimensioning your material I like to go to say McMaster car to see what kind of material is available because you don't want to design your your part and then realize that you can't get the material to be able to manufacture it. So you want to scroll on down to raw materials then select metals. We're going to create an aluminum sheet so we want aluminum and then we want to go to sheets, bars, and strips. Now 6061 is usually the cheapest and McMaster usually has the the cheapest material first. So we can just go ahead and click uh, multi-purpose 6061. Now over here they have very good search parameters so I'll go ahead and search for a half inch thickness and then here it lists all the dimensions that you'd be able to purchase so we have 2 by 48 inch, 4 by 48 inch, 6 by 48, 8 by 8 and 12 by 48 so I'm going to choose an 8 by 8 sheet so let's go back to our sketch and we'll create a sheet with dimensions 8 by 8 by half inch. First we want to start with a center rectangle. It doesn't matter which plane you want to use but I'll just sketch on the top plane. and go ahead and dimension your sketch. Again we said it's 8 by 8. And like we mentioned before there are numerous ways to go about creating a sketch. One way to to create the aluminum breadboard is you dimension out the sheet like we just did and then you start creating the holes in the same sketch. Or you can stop the sketch, extrude, extrude the sheet to a half inch, then do a sketch on the top plane again and then start creating your holes. So then you'll have two sketches and we're going to perform the latter. So I'll stop sketch and extrude this to a half inch. Click OK. Now I'm going to look at the top view and we can cl click this top face and then say create sketch. So now we have a sketch sketch on this top plane. If we look at the side you'll notice that the sketch plane is on that that top piece that we selected. Now in this example that we already did, we have an 8x8 matrix of holes. So we'll go ahead and start creating our circles. I'll do a center diameter circle. Okay, now I'm sure you realize that you definitely don't want to sit here and sketch out all 64 holes. And what you can do is use rectangular pattern. So I'm going to delete these last two circles but keep keep this one and you'll realize why in a second. So under sketch you can go to rectangular pattern. Now when the menu first pops up it's asking for an object and that's going to be this circle. 
Next we have to specify the direction. So we're going to go in the right direction. And for distance type, you have two options. The first one is extent and the second one is spacing. With extent, when you specify the distance here, that distance will be, for example, from this circle center point to the last circle center point. But in this case, we're going to do spacing. And I'll specify a distance of one inch. Now with spacing, that will be the distance from the from this circle center point to the adjacent center point. And we're going to have eight. It looks like that we only duplicated the the origin of that circle, so I'm just going to have to do it over. I'll hit Control Z. Click on, make sure you grab the outer circle because I, I think we grabbed the origin at first. Go to sketch again, rectangular pattern. And for distance we'll specify one inch. And for quantity we'll have eight. Click OK. And we now have eight of those circles. And to perform the rest of the array you can do multiple rectangular patterns. So I'll go ahead and do that. We now have all 64 holes drawn using rectangular pattern. So now we can go ahead and specify the dimension. And we mentioned that we wanted to have a quarter 20 holes so we'll make this 0.25 inch. And notice that when we change just this one diameter of the circle, all of the circles change and that's because all these circles are referenced to this first circle that we drew. And you definitely want to use this to your advantage because if we didn't use rectangular pattern then we would have to go to each circle to specify the dimension and it gets even worse when we have to go back and modify a dimension if we wanted to okay so we specified a dimension of 0.25 but since we're tapping these holes we don't want it to be a quarter inch so what we have to do is consult a tap and drill chart and I already have one pulled up these are pretty common to find throughout the internet all you have to do is search tap and drill chart But this one is from Little Machine Shop, so we have to give them credit. Now to use this, we want to first look for our screw size, which is a quarter inch. And for threads per inch, we want 20. And now we can go to the drill size. Now it has two columns, one for aluminum, brass, and plastics, and one for steel, stainless, and iron. We want to use the column that has aluminum. And for a quarter 20 holes, it's telling us to use a drill size of 7, which has a decimal equivalent of 0 0.201. And now we can go back to our drawing and change this dimension to 0 0.201. Again, all these holes are dimensioned, but the circles are still blue, and that's because it's not referenced to the actual aluminum sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and specify these as a half inch. Now our sketch is fully defined. Go ahead and stop sketch. Now to select all the holes at once, you definitely don't want to go individually. Click and then hold control and click all 64. So what you can do is, is left click your mouse and click and drag. And that's a quick and easy way to select all of the holes. Now we want to extrude these. And remember that if we specify this in a negative direction, the operation will automatically go to cut. And for distance, just specify all. Click OK. 
And now we have a piece of aluminum breadboard that once we build this sheet, we can tap each one individually. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below or leave a question or comment.